Hey there, fellows. Hopefully you guys are down for another experiment in typical Garage 54 fashion. In this episode, we'll be showcasing yet another suspension mod. You might remember how we installed some magnets, some basketballs. A lot of people seem to have liked that, if the comments are anything to go by. So recently, more than a few people have been sending in this here picture, which shows a typical sort of lot of coil spring. To me, it looks like it's from the rear. It's definitely not a front spring. In any case, that spring was made using some rebar. It's hard to tell the exact diameter, but I'm guessing it's somewhere around 12 to 14 mil. We decided to go with the 14 mil. Hopefully that's going to give us enough stiffness. Okay, let's remove a spring so that we have a reference point for fabricating some coiled rebar springs. Then we install them and see what happens. We'll go for a ride and hopefully get a laugh out of it. Let's do this. Coil springs out of rebar. Will they work? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. We're going to be using these as samples. I've removed them from the car. To be honest, I don't even know whether these are cut down or not. I should maybe check on the internet to see how many coils these are supposed to have. Maybe they're fine, I honestly don't know. I mean, we're constantly cutting and welding them, so God knows what they look like from the factory. Anyway, what matters is we have a sample. We can always space the coils out a bit to make the spring a bit taller while retaining the same amount of coils. Right, so now we do some bending. Bending rebar is actually quite a challenge. I was actually just on the phone with some lathe operators. I mean, they do have some serious equipment at their disposal. But they want nothing to do with the whole thing. Can't imagine what they're afraid of. Which is why we're gonna take the rebar and put some heat into it. I mean, this isn't something you can easily bend by hand. That shouldn't be an issue, though, since we are dealing with carbon steel, which isn't adversely affected by heat, especially since we won't put a crazy amount of heat into them. Right, time to heat everything up. Throw it all in. Okay, let's do this. Looks like we did a shit job. Can you even call that a spring? All right, fellas, the first spring we made. Honestly, this has to be some kind of obscure method. We were basically eyeballing it the entire way. They do say that the human eye is a very precise tool, which at the very least allows you to shoot accurately. But for whatever reason, it's not the best tool for making a coil spring. You saw that we stuck a pipe into some compressor housing to keep it from rotating. It all turned out a bit off, but whatever. I'm guessing we can still put that spring to use. As for the second one, I've marked up the pipe, so it should turn out slightly better. We didn't have any markers, but instead we had some chalk, which doesn't burn out, based on our experience. Right, so now I carefully remove this spring, the pipe is all marked up, we just have to torch another hole to stick the rebar into, and then we start bending around the chalk marks on the pipe. The second spring should look a lot better than the first one.
This one turned out fine. Check out the second spring, fellas. Marking up that pipe made all the difference. I mean, look at it, it's so even and nice. Unlike the first one. <laughs> to be honest, we decided that whatever happens, happens. In the end, that's why one of them turned out to be a mess, while the other was done properly. Looking good. Awesome. Just a bit more. That'll do. And now things get interesting. It's planted. <laughs> what do you know? Let's bring it down a bit lower. That side's a bit higher? They look about the same, but the back end is really high up in the air. They just need to settle down a bit. <laughs> Given that they're fresh out of the box. Out of the scrapyard, rather. Looking good. We are moving. That's enough. Now we can go forward. Everything's okay. Right. What's that noise? Oh man, these are stiff. They are super stiff. It's like we're running Neva Springs. Thank you. Now we drive. They don't seem to be collapsing. We were expecting them to compress once we load up the rebar and start driving. For the car to drop down lower and lower each time the rear end hops up and down. But as a matter of fact, that's not the case. It is stiff though. We should really put something in the trunk. It's quite nice on even pavement. Though it is jumping around. Why is it doing that? Maybe the shocks don't work. This isn't bad. This is going okay so far. We good. Everything is still in one piece. That's nice to know. We've got some potholes up ahead. And we're on our way. It doesn't seem to be floating. Yeah. 14 mil rebar is a bit much. I should have bought some 12 mil. Then again, 12 mil probably would have collapsed. Meanwhile, these springs are working. Not bad. Zero regard for those potholes. I don't care, I've got new springs. Okay, we have made it to our favorite road, which is good for testing any sort of suspension. This should be... horrible. Now we really put them through their paces. This should be one hell of a challenge. The car is no longer sitting at such a dramatic angle. The rear end isn't that high up in the air anymore. You can clearly feel that it's lower than it used to be. Much lower. Though it doesn't seem to be hitting the bump stops. Okay. Keep going. If they make it through this alive, that'll be nothing short of a miracle. Going over every single rock. Okay. Oi! Oi! Oh, wow. There's something going on with the suspension links. What is that? What is going on? I don't get it. Must be something wrong with the springs. That's it. Looks like they've collapsed. I have a feeling that we're done here. 
This experiment is coming to an end fast. Can you maybe lift yourself back up, please? Let's keep it together, come on. That's it. We're done. Just as we expected. So the spring we had installed on the right side looked pretty much like an OEM piece. But now it's crushed. If I can just show you how much space is left in between the coils. It shouldn't be hard to remove. This is what's left of it. It's completely deformed. No way this thing has any dampening left in it. It even looks like... Then again, I can't see any marks on the coils. Let's check on the left spring. Oh, wow, it is jammed in there. This one I can't retrieve, given that it was a bit longer. You can see that it toppled to the side. Some of the coils are pressed together, while others still have a gap in between them. You don't have any space on this side, but there is a bit left here. It was able to keep the car a bit higher off the ground, but it definitely wasn't doing much else. Then again, that's the whole point of an experiment. So where exactly does this leave us? I'd say you can drive maybe a hundred meters on a beat up surface, though on a good road you'd probably make it a bit further. But if you were to break a spring in the forest, finding a rebar and bending it around a tree, sorry, but that just isn't gonna work. Anyway, fellas. A lot of our viewers demanded that we give it a try, and we were happy to oblige. The result? They don't work properly. They obviously make springs from a different sort of steel. And this you can't really bend cold without special equipment. Meaning we had to heat them up. I mean, that could have weakened them, I don't know. In any case, this experiment has been a massive success. These springs do work for a bit, but then they fail. You guys keep those suggestions coming. Leave some comments, give us a thumbs up. All right, catch you later.